Hello everyone, welcome to Love Where You Live, our monthly magazine of everything Sheboygan County, brought to you by the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Betsy Alice, I am with the Chamber, and today we're going to take a little tour of the holiday season here in Sheboygan County. Um, we're going to go back, look a little at history, we're going to go forward, look at some of the special events that are happening in our community, things that you definitely should take advantage of. I'd like to welcome Travis Gross as our first guest. Travis is the Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Historical Museum here in Sheboygan. Welcome, Travis. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. And, you know, I get pretty excited about this part of the, part of the year. Right. And I'm sure you do. Um, probably also a little tired. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, pretty easy to get in, engrossed by Christmas at the museum at this time of year. And it's a lot of time, uh, time into it. but. Uh, uh, you know, it's worth it. It's fun. Um, when work is fun, you don't realize you're working. So hey, that's yeah. the way to be. Tell, for just for <clears throat> the people who are watching, if you could give a little history about yourself, okay, and then about the museum, sure, we'd love to hear. Yeah, so uh, I'm born and raised Sheboygan, uh, multiple okay. multiple generation Sheboyganite. Uh, graduated North High School, uh, um, went off to school. Left the town for about 12 years. Uh, my wife and I came back. She's also a Sheboyganite, mm -hmm. high school sweetheart. So uh, came back about 15, 16 years ago um, and uh, decided that Sheboygan was our home and this is where we want to be. So can't beat the lake, can't beat the kettles, can't beat a lot of things around here. So. That's right. And the history. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful history. Yeah. 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 Thanks. And then what about the Historical Museum? Uh, the Society that. itself has been around since 1923. Uh, originally, the museum, as we call it, was housed in the courthouse. Uh, they were pushed out during World War II when uh, the federal government came in for the war effort and they needed some space in the courthouse. So the collection at that time went into storage. Uh, and it was the early 50s when um, the Historical Society struck a deal with the county of Sheboygan and was uh, able to use the Taylor House on Erie and Taylor Drive okay. uh, as the museum. So the Taylor House remained the museum from the mid-1950s until the mid-1990s when our current museum was built. Uh, so it's a long, rich history, 90 plus years, you know, wow. uh, around, and it's good, you know, uh, Sheboygan County, as you said earlier, great history in this area. So. Yes, and a lot of organizations really committed and people mm -hmm. committed to making that come alive. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly mm -hmm. in your case. There are so many exhibits there. Mm -hmm. I know. It goes it ranges from the circus history, which I find fascinating right. and a lot of people do, uh, business history. For those of us, or mm -hmm. not me, I've been there, but for right. maybe some of those who have not visited the museum lately, mm -hmm. what are some of those regular? Yeah, so what we uh, deem our permanent exhibits, as we call them, uh, really involve a lot of it. So we, we go through the whole history of the county. We start with our Native American um, uh, exhibit, explaining about the Native Americans that lived in the area prior to Europeans arriving. And then we go through time. It's like a, a march through time through our exhibit halls. Uh, we look at the early settlement of Sheboygan County. We have a real, a real wonderful exhibit on the maritime aspect of Sheboygan, you know, because really after all, Sheboygan probably wouldn't exist if not for Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we emphasize that and then, um, you know, specifically the Rice Coal Company being such a huge part of Sheboygan history and the, and the building of this of this area. Uh, the circus exhibit is a wonderful exhibit. It's one that most mm -hmm. people are kind of surprised by because even locals don't realize the, uh, the, the value of the circus to Sheboygan County, you know, at one, one point we had several circuses placed uh, home in, in right, our city. So right. um, it's always fun to talk about that. And there's still a few family members uh, that are around that can speak to working in the circus. So uh, it's pretty amazing um, when you think about it. It's like Sheboygan, a circus town? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we have a varied and fascinating future here. Yeah, absolutely. Or, excuse me, past. Yeah, Not future, yeah. but past. Yeah, well, it all plays together. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not originally from Sheboygan, mm -hmm. um, but I have heard the story um, that in times past, on Thanksgiving night, maybe 20 years ago plus, mm -hmm. um, families would dress up and wear their long coats and stay warm and go down to Prangies. And mm -hmm. that's where the tree was lit, the, the windows came alive, 
and the holiday season was brought into being. Right. And, you know, I can imagine the fascination with that. Our family used to go to Chicago to do that, mm -hmm. and I was so pleased to hear that that kind of tradition happened here. Mm -hmm. And now you have brought that back mm -hmm. in our museum. So if you could share that collection with us, just give us some yeah. insights into what is there. And yeah, and, and it is. It's wonderful to hear the stories uh, of the people who remember those windows at Prangies and going down on Thanksgiving Day and watching them. Uh, my father-in-law was a police officer in Sheboygan his whole life. And when he was a young beat cop, uh, he would have to work Thanksgiving evening downtown controlling traffic. And it's funny because you hear controlling traffic, you're thinking cars, but he actually had to control mm -hmm. the people. There were so many people that came down to see the windows at Prangies. Um, so when we were able to, uh, when the museum was able to get some of these pieces, uh, they jumped at it. Um, because we want to keep mm -hmm. this tradition going. Uh, I'm a, a bit younger. I don't remember the windows as much. I'm a, uh, what I call myself a Plaza 8 kid. Um, that's okay. what I remember yeah. is downtown at the earliest memories. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> But so, you know, when we were able to get these pieces, you know, over 300 of them in our collection now, uh, it was fantastic because now we can keep that tradition alive at the museum. Uh, we do what Prangy said. Every year the scenes change. We change our scenes every year. There's a different theme every year. Um, sometimes it makes it a little difficult, but it's also fun because it's always different. Um, and, uh, you know, so when, when I see families come through, grandparents, parents, chil uh, grandchildren, mm -hmm. and everyone is amazed. You know, the, grand the grandparents are happy to remember when they were kids. The parents, you know, are happy to see their children and their parents happy. And the, the little ones are just amazed. You know, mm -hmm. I think in this day of technology and digital everything, to see mechanical things, you know, the yeah. little ones are kind of amazed by that. And uh, you and I, well, that's, we're used to it, you know. Uh -huh. but, uh, but, you know, we can continue on that tradition, and um, it's fun for us to do that, and that's what we should be doing, so. That's true. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's a wonderful exhibit. I have been there in years past mm -hmm. to see it. Um, uh, I am sure that when you receive these items, some of them may be in disrepair. Some of them are in various states of, of you know, readiness for right. the public. And, and, you know, I think people would love to know what goes into making that happen and to keeping those things mechanically intact. Yeah, it's a, a lot of behind the scenes, you know, I mean, the, 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 the final product everyone enjoys, but they don't understand that we work on this year round. Uh, we have volunteers come mm -hmm. in, work on the animation, make sure the mechanicals, make sure the motors are functioning properly. Um, uh, people coming in and making different costumes for these so we can use them over and over again. Um, building the sets, you know, we have wonderful volunteers. Um, and maintenance, uh, our maintenance man at mm -hmm. the museum, uh, unbelievable what they can, what can, what they can accomplish. Uh, and uh, so it takes, you know, we start, I, I'll give everybody off January because it's such a hard run for us in December. By February, we're already starting on the, the next upcoming Holiday Memories exhibit. Uh, wow. A lot of it is that behind the scenes, getting animation ready and things like that. So. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Dan Wirth and, and Jim Lighty and Mark Price, these are volunteers that come in and work on this, and what they do is just amazing. Uh, I stand back in, in awe every year. Just, yeah. Yeah, so. And they probably never ask for credit. No, not yeah. not really, you know. I mean, we'll serve them lunch a, a couple of times throughout the, you know, the few times throughout the, the main setup in November, and uh, we just, uh, everyone's just happy to be a part of it. and and to see that final product and then to see the people enjoying it, you know, that's the icing. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, getting the accolades and, you know, a lot of us are just kind of, well, this is what we do, we enjoy doing it, you know. You're welcome, mm -hmm. but this is just fun for us, so. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if anyone in our amazing. audience is inclined toward the mechanical, regardless of their age, I mean, you right, might absolutely. get some young people in. Yeah. Um, they should contact the museum and maybe they can become an apprentice yeah, and then yeah, move up to, to actually working on the, uh, the pre-Christmas craziness. Right, right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for extra hands, you know, always, you know, many hands make for light work, so. Um, yeah. 
and uh, and there's you know there's a uh, there's a lot you know we have some of our longtime volunteers that come in and help out um, you know and their roles have changed as you know mm -hmm. as they've gotten older but they're still they just want to be a part of it and they just want to you know see this come and and, and see this put together and uh, and see the happiness that it brings so it's it, it's amazing I you know yeah. I mean I just I'm taken aback every year. I, you know, I don't know what else to say. About well, it that. certainly, <laughs> it certainly makes your job much more pleasant and rewarding mm -hmm. um, to have those kinds of people on board. I know mm -hmm. that from mm -hmm. experience at the chamber too. Mm -hmm. It really, the volunteers are the lifeblood of what happens there. We're just yeah. merely creating the environment, giving them the the praise, and That's and right. hoping they'll come back year after year to help with the work. Yep. So, yep. yeah, good for you. Yeah. Um, any hints about what it's featuring this year? Yeah. Are we going to be able to see things like Bruce the Spruce? Yeah, Bruce will be there in the lobby greeting everybody as they come in. Uh, Bruce is a hit. You know, everybody loves mm -hmm. Bruce the Spruce. Um, so he'll be there. He's there every year. Uh, this year our theme is a storybook Christmas. So we have seven different uh, displays or scenes, uh, all based on some of our most favorite uh, holiday and Christmas storybooks um, mm -hmm. so uh, within that then each has their animation each is a different scene um, and we think it's a it's a unique idea um, uh, I will say that the uh, littlest angel display that we have is in my opinion the best one we got going on this okay, year okay. Uh, just amazing what they did with the with the littlest angel storybook so uh, I think people will be amazed at that one very yeah. nice it kind of goes along with the bookworm gardens right yeah. Well, they're closed for the season. The museum has the mm -hmm. storybooks for the holidays. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, such a treasure for both young and old. And you've created this engaging experience for families at the other buildings on campus, mm -hmm. which maybe people haven't gone to as often. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what, what hides in those buildings? Yeah, so we open up the Taylor House and we open up the log cabin, our 1862 Winehold log cabin. Uh, and we decorate those um, for the holidays. Our other two historic buildings are closed, no heat, that kind of okay, thing. So it's yeah. hard to use those. Um, so this year in the Taylor House, the storybook is Twas the Night Before Christmas. Uh, our staff, our education um, director at the museum, develops a scavenger hunt every year. And uh, she comes in with, she has two young small boys. They come in and they hide things around the Taylor House. And for adults and children alike. Okay. You, know, you walk through the house, you look at the decorations, but you also do a scavenger hunt. Um, and this year it's based on, like I said, Twas the Night Before Christmas. The log house is a very traditional uh, Christmas um, based on the little house in the big woods, uh, Laura mm -hmm. Ingalls um, uh, story. One of my book. favorites. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, you know, that's a very, a very basic, uh, but within there we have the traditional you know, what it would have been like for a prairie or a, a immigrant family living in a log cabin in the 1860s to celebrate uh, Christmas. Um, and in there for the little ones and adults alike, we have some old fashioned toys, cup and ball and uh, checkerboard and that. And so people can spend some time in there and enjoy it. Uh, I love nice. both of those buildings um, uh, throughout the year. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I'm partial to the log cabin. It's just, kind of more my style, but the Taylor House is beautiful. And, and the, uh, the two garden clubs in town work together with uh, Bernie Markovich, our what we call lead elf, uh, and decorate okay. the Taylor <laughs> House. Bad. Yeah, the lead elf. So, uh, and they do a wonderful job. It's, it's amazing again. Uh, a group of ladies come in and within a couple of hours, they transform the Taylor House into this wow. holiday happy you know, land, I guess. So it's amazing. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So what about a particular events? Do you have any particular events you want to share that are coming up? Yeah, so, uh, you know, this is the end of our year, holiday memories. Mm -hmm. We wrap up. Um, January, we take off, kind of get things back in order. Uh, mm -hmm. We start welcoming in our, our students for our education program uh, in January. And then in February, we start our third Saturday programs that most people oh, are familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, and February, we are doing Taverns of Sheboygan County. Um, we thought, how can we not share a little bit mm -hmm. of that history in Sheboygan County? Um, there are a lot of them. Yeah, yeah and there always <laughs> there has been. It's, so uh, beyond that, you know, we'll have our speaker series in March where uh, we are going to bring in um, 
companies involved with food production in the county. Okay. Uh, so they'll talk about the history of their company, share some of their products, and kind of where they're going in the future, what they, you know, how they help with our community. Uh, doing a mom and pop grocery store for a third Saturday. We have our music fest again next year uh, in early mm -hmm. September, um, where we highlight local acts, uh, come up to the museum. We use that as an open house. Uh, everything is free of charge that day, so you can come out. The front porch of our log cabin is the stage, so it's an outdoor event. People get to sit under the trees, watch these bands play. They want to get up and take a walk through any of the buildings or the museum, they're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. uh, just a nice way to kind of say, you know, give back, you know. Yeah. Uh, not everyone can get to the museum, so this is a, kind of a way to try and draw those people. So. Uh, and then it's, you know, always and forever holiday memories is always in that mix every month. We're working on holiday memories. So Yeah, this is yeah. that and it culminates at Christmas yeah. time. So Yeah, we'll uh ten programs again next year. So we stay okay. pretty busy up there. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Good to know and a good mm -hmm. place to go any time, but also mm -hmm. on the weekends with your children, with yeah. your parents, with whomever is visiting you. Mm -hmm. Um all of the visitors love the museum too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So these exhibits are incredible. I mean, I just, I'm sitting here thinking, I know, when am I going to get there? When am I going to get there? Um, uh, how many visitors do you typically receive during the holiday season? Uh, for our holiday memories run, uh, last year we had a huge season. We had about 7,300 people come through in the month of December. Um, we're right around that mark usually, 6,500, 7,000 people in, okay. in the month. Okay. So it's a good run. Um, we hope to always top that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're doing some new things this year in hopes of attracting some some more people, some new people. Uh, story mm -hmm. time with Santa Claus. Um, uh, I mentioned the scavenger hunt. We've mm -hmm. done that in the past, but we tweaked it this year. Um, things like that. So, uh, you know, several thousand people come through um, just in the month. You know. So people can go to the website, find out what mm -hmm. the hours are, find out when these activities are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have it on our web page. We have it on our Facebook page, uh, and it's yeah, it's it's all there. So, great, yeah. great. And then, mm -hmm. what are your hours, and what does it cost for a family to come or for a person? Uh, we are open starting Friday uh, after Thanksgiving. We're open every day minus Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Okay. Uh, noon until five. Monday evenings we stay open until seven. Um, that seems to be working for us. We might actually expand that in the mm -hmm. future. Um, we find that some of the younger families, it's easier for them to come a little later in the afternoon. So, mm -hmm. uh, so seven on Mondays. Uh, admission is six dollars adults, five dollars active military and seniors. Children six to seventeen are three dollars. The little ones are free, and of course our members are free. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, you know I encourage everybody to take a look this holiday season, and it's a great way for your family to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. thank you so much, Travis, You're for being with us. Thanks. And uh, I'm looking forward to all of it. Thanks. Welcome back to Love Where You Live. Today we're celebrating the holidays here on Love Where You Live. I'm Betsy Alice. Our guest for the second part of our program today is Jerry Plain, who is the chair of one of our favorite events, Making Spirits Bright, brought to you by our Rotary Clubs uh, in Sheboygan County. And at one, one point you won the Chamber Champion Award. I think it was the we year did. before last. We yeah. did. We were very fortunate to win yeah. the Nonprofit of the Year. And yes. we've been very nicely nominated this year for the Working Together uh, Award. Excellent. It certainly is a Working Together project. It absolutely as is. As we will discuss. So tell me how this all started. How did this come about? As a result of a Rotary conference, uh, my co-chair at the time, Judy Slawney, and I happened to be attending this conference. And Washington County has a very similar show and had just experienced their first year. And so there was a breakout session at this conference where they were sharing um, what a wonderful light show that they had in their fairgrounds at that time. And uh, one thing led to another. I think we both had the same idea and we put our heads together after the meeting and said, wow, 
what a wonderful thing this would be for Sheboygan. And the rest is kind of history. It was a lot of work, um, checking out various venues for consideration, talking to our Rotarians, trying to get them excited about the possibility of doing this, and um, getting, getting all of that approved, and then, of mm -hmm. course, to find sponsors the first year to help us make it happen. And but it's, it's been a, yeah. a labor of love. Um, no doubt that it takes an immense amount of work. But um, And I'm guessing in that initial stage, probably a lot of what you might call is lobbying, you know, really convincing people that this would be as fantastic as it is. It was uh, um, a little bit of a difficult sell, actually, because it was mm -hmm. such a new concept for people mm -hmm. around here, apparently. There weren't a lot of people that were aware of these kinds of light shows that were going on and the fact that we wanted to offer no admission and to encourage mm -hmm. people to bring items for our local food pantries in lieu of that, admit, uh, that uh, fee. So, um, but we yes. proved ourselves. Thankfully, yes. there were sponsors that, that had confidence that we could, could do it. And, and you raised a significant amount of money along the way. We Tell did. us how you do that. Well, in addition to our sponsorships, which is basically used for mm -hmm. the maintenance and future development of new displays, mm -hmm. um, we also accept cash donations at the park while we're open. And people have been just superbly generous mm -hmm. with that. Um, a good part of that also goes toward um, future development and the maintenance. But mm -hmm. in recent years, we've been able to give back to the community in a number of fashions by way of some, some charitable donations. That's, that's really a wonderful thing. I, you know, I, I remember hearing numbers as people, even partway through, people driving through and they were telling us the, the tally and I was very impressed that, yes, people are generous in Sheboygan County. They very much are. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice work. When do you start planning each year? There isn't much time off. Okay. Um, we now are open through December 31st. And then okay. we have 10 days to take everything down and be totally out of the park. So January 10th is our final day. Okay. And then after that, we have about a two-week hiatus, um, a little time off to regroup. And then we're starting up all over again, talking about, okay, what do we want to do this year so that we can start planning a budget. And again, by mm -hmm. April, we're out looking for fundraising dollars in order to help us bring the new year around. So yeah. not a lot yeah. of time. It's no. pretty much a year-round effort. I was going to say, kind of like the History Museum. Absolutely. You get a little, a little rest for a month and then you're back at it again. I mean, I, I don't think people have any idea how much work and how much heart goes into some of these projects. And we I, have such a dedicated bunch of people on yeah. our committees and without them giving endless hours, some of them hundreds of hours, throughout mm -hmm. the year that they spend um, in one fashion or another. And wow. just without that, it wouldn't be possible. Approximately how many people are volunteering for this? We just did a tally recently okay. because we like to share those kinds of statistics. And we feel now that we have well over a thousand volunteers that help wow. in one fashion or another, Excellent. whether that's being part of one of our steering committees, on our board, um, businesses and organizations mm -hmm. that help us during the event. Uh, this year we started something a little bit new where we had organized groups volunteer to help us with the setup, which provided so much of an easier way mm -hmm. of doing that mm -hmm. than just relying on people to show up when and if they had the time. So all told, throughout all of that, we're, we're saying that we have well over a thousand now. Boy, that's excellent. That's what really makes something happen year after year. And such a huge community involvement, bringing so many aspects of the community together to work Absolutely. toward a good goal. And so you mentioned statistics. So one of the questions I had was, um, how many bulbs does it take to make this a winter wonderland? We're keeping it a little bit of a secret. Oh, okay. Um, and, and the answer will be known. In fact, one of our media sources has already disclosed it, if you are <laughs> searching it out. But the reason I'm saying we have a little mystery is because we have a little blurb on our website now asking people to guess how many lights ah, we have. Okay. I will say that it's certainly over 100,000. Wow. Um, and so... 
we're, we're hoping people go to the website and, and make a good guess. And as I said, there, there mm -hmm. it will be disclosed on the website ultimately, but there is Excellent. a source out there right now that does disclose it as well. Uh -huh. So Google. people have to do a little you research. You have to do a little Google research. That's right. Oh, that's great. So how many people go through? Uh, last year we had around 73,000 uh, cars. I'm sorry, 73,000 people, 21,600 wow. cars. And I think we're figuring an average about three people in a vehicle. Sometimes there's okay. way more than that. I'm always amazed okay. at how many people can get crammed into a van sometimes. Yeah because they brought the whole family and, and the they, dog. And they all want to be together to see yes, it. Yes, yes. You, know, you don't want to bring two cars so you can't talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's, that's wonderful. Any other stats? Um, our food bank also okay. uh, brought in about 73,000 pounds last year. Uh, total, similar number. To to the yeah, number ironic. Yeah. Ironic last year that they were very similar. Um, over the four years, 228,000 pounds which Liz Kroll of the Food Bank tells us relates to about five months of supply for all of the food banks or the food pantries that make up the food bank. We have a stretch goal this year. We're hoping to increase that number by 10 percent, which would mean um, about 80,000 pounds this year we're hoping to bring in. So we're encouraging everybody to be extra generous because the need has not decreased by any means. Right, absolutely. I, I just saw the statistics, the poverty statistics mm, and the people mm. needing assistance. It is growing. So, yep, that's important. So, there's something new going on from what I understand at the Quarry Building. The um, JC's Quarry Building, is that an additional part of the program? It's really not new. It's okay. been here since the first year. Um, for some reason, we have difficulty getting people to discover it. Okay. Despite many efforts, um, I must so be one of those. It's in its fifth <laughs> year too, just okay. as is the the drive-through light show, um, and it's a fun place to go. We encourage people to go there first before they come to the light okay. show, just simply because of driving directions. There's supposedly a no left turn as you leave the park, which is the way you have to go to get to the quarry. Oh, okay. So we're suggesting quarry first, and What's a lot name? going on there. Okay. Um, we have a wreath raffle. Thirteen area designers have donated beautiful wreaths this year that people can purchase raffle tickets for and okay. put their choices in a box next to their wreath of choice. Great. Um, Santa is there. Um, they are only open Friday through Sundays, but Santa is there every, every night during that weekend. They have nightly entertainment from various musical groups and um, single individuals throughout the community. We have some light concessions available. And I think the most popular thing over there is on Friday and Saturday nights, the Discovery Trolley is there. And for $2 a person, you can ride it through the park. Oh, fabulous you board idea. board it at the trolley and take a spin through the park in this wonderfully restored, heated trolley from years gone by. Well, you know, I. We have run out of time, but there is so much to say about this incredible light show and all of the additional things you can do at Evergreen Park and at the Quarry Building. So thank you, Jerry, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope those numbers continue to rise and that this just continues to be as wonderful as it is. Thank you so much. Thanks.